We're going to talk about composition this week because it affects every photo anyone takes. No matter what you shoot, composition is really key. It can make or break a photo. So with that said, we're going to talk about five mistakes every photographer makes when it comes to composition, how you can avoid them, how you can learn from them. I still make some of these mistakes every now and then. It's good to learn from this stuff. It's it our Tuesday. <laughs> to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday, we bring a brand new, fresh <laughs> photography tutorial. This week, of course, is no different. We're talking about composition, and we're talking about five composition mistakes we all make. I make them. I still make some of these now. But if you learn from them, you can learn not to do them, how to overcome them, and just think about them when you go out and take your photos. Sometimes you're taking a photo and you're reacting to something, so you can't necessarily perfect the composition, but you can often fix a lot of this sort of stuff in post as well. So let's get into it. Let's talk about five different composition mistakes we all make and how we can avoid them. Let's get the first one out of the way because it's one we all know about, but it's one that I know I still mess up sometimes. And that's just thinking about your horizon, keeping that nice and level in the photo, or if you're not going to keep it level, having a, a reason, you know, deliberately choosing to do that. Like with most things in composition, having a deliberate choice is almost always going to be better than just accidentally thinking about it later and it's too late and it's all messed up. You can keep your horizon straight. I think that that generally works the best and it's generally kind of the rule of thumb you want to go for. If you do want to go for a slanted horizon, no problem. Just make sure you're choosing to do that. This is something I have messed up on so many times, even, even to this day. I'll go out, I'll take a photo, landscape, portrait, whatever it is, and I'll realize, ah, oh, it's not level. It's not level and it would have taken just an extra second to think about it. I always try to think about it. You can actually use, most cameras have a leveling system so you can actually see whether you're level. That can be really helpful. But otherwise, it just really can make the difference in a photo. Number two, let's talk about negative space. Now this is something I struggled with for a long time. Either having too much of it or not enough of it. And this again is something you wanna be making a conscious choice about. Now, it can be very tempting, and at least it was for me, to go in really tight on my subject. That's what I used to do because I love the lens compression, I love the bokeh I get from that, I love the look of it, it looks all cinematic, it looks beautiful, but sometimes you do want a bit of negative space. Just a bit of room for your subject to breathe in the photo. And sometimes it can be an integral part of the composition. This photo, for example, works particularly well because Matilda is very, very small in the frame compared to the overall landscape that she's standing in. If I had zoomed in just on her specifically, it wouldn't be as much of an interesting photo. Sometimes you do want lots of negative space around your subject to give you a bit of an environmental feel to things, maybe add some context to the photo, maybe to make them look small in the frame. And sometimes you do want to fill the frame with your subject, but making that choice is key and just thinking about the end result. And something that's worth remembering, and I try to keep this in mind these days, is you can always crop your photo a little bit. You can always go in a little bit tighter, but it's much more difficult to expand that photo out in post. That leads me on perfectly to number three. Now this is similar, but specific to taking portraits or you know photos of people really, or animals I suppose as well. And this is about cutting people off at different parts of their bodies or not leaving enough headroom or leaving too much headroom. Let's talk about that, right? Now this is something I am haunted by because I have a few photo shoots from my past where I look back and I've cut people off at the knees, I've cut people off at the elbows, I've left either way too much headspace and it looks very strange, or I haven't left enough, or it's horrifying. It's horrifying to even think about. This is something to really be aware of when you're photographing people in particular. You don't want to be cutting people off at the joints. It just looks unnatural and it looks a bit weird. It's not something you want in your photo. Similarly to headspace, you want to have enough room above without too much room. Something to just really bear in mind. To play it safe, I'll often go for a full body shot if that's the kind of thing I'm going for. If I'm going for a slightly wider shot, I'll just make sure I've got those feet in, I've got those hands in. Because if you go just a little bit too tight, you can cut just the feet off, that looks a bit weird. You know, the knees, the wrists, it just isn't a good look. It looks a bit strange and it just doesn't look particularly professional. So something to really keep in mind. This is one that I've always got in the back of my mind now when I'm photographing people, just to not cut them off 
uh, any particular part. Now sticking with your subject, and a lot of the time this will be with people, tip number four is about not always centering up your subject. Now this kind of plays in a little bit with tip number three, but centering up your subject is something that a lot of us do automatically when we first start photography. It just feels like the natural thing to do, and it can often mean putting someone's face in the center of the frame, which means you've got almost half the photo with nothing in it, just a lot of headspace, and you're cutting people off, and again, it's not good. But even without that side of things, you don't have to center people up. Sometimes it does work, and sometimes that can look great, and if you think about symmetry and stuff like that, it can look fantastic. But sometimes you might wanna experiment with something like the rule of thirds, right? Place your subject to the right or the left, and have a little play with that. It can really affect the feel of the image, especially if they're facing to one side, they can face into the photo, that feels more natural. But if you really wanna experiment and push things, you could have them facing out of the photo. That can give a, a real kind of trapped feel to your subject, depending on the kind of feel you wanna go for. But it's definitely something to think about breaking out of that habit of just naturally and instantly going for centering someone up. Again, can look good though. Doesn't mean you don't have to do it at all can look really good. Now tip number five is a big one because this is all about considering everything around your subject. This means your background, this means things looking like they're coming out of your subject's head, this means lines all around. Now we've talked about the horizon being straight but it can also be important to try and not have the horizon cross straight through someone's head. Right, that can just be a bit distracting, it can just take away from the photo and usually just a tiny movement up or down from the camera can just correct that pretty much instantly. That goes for all kinds of lines. You know, when you're going out and taking photos, you might wanna be looking for leading lines. You might wanna be looking for things that draw your viewer into the photo. But you wanna be careful that you're not drawing your viewer away from the subject or you're doing something strange like pointing to a weird area of the photo or maybe crossing over your subject or something like that. Lines can be really important, just like your background. You wanna make sure you're not including anything you don't want in there. And often, especially if you're zooming, we've talked about this in the past, you can zoom to actually change what your background's gonna be, move the camera a little bit, just to remove elements that you might not want. If you're shooting in a very beautiful forest, let's say, you might want to not include the bin that's for the picnic area. And it's something to just be aware of when you're taking a photo. It can be very easy to focus in on your subject and work out all that sort of stuff with the composition and then not realize there's something very distracting. Maybe it's just a bright color. I put this photo of this gorilla in black and white because I just felt the green of the grass was so vibrant and so intense that it just took away from the photo. So it can just be something like a very vibrant color. Maybe it can be a very bright object. Maybe it can be something that doesn't look so good in the background. Those things are really important. Now, I'm sure most of us have made some of these mistakes at some point or another. I certainly have. I still think about every single one of these when I go out and shoot. Sometimes it becomes a little bit more natural the more you go and shoot, but you still wanna be thinking about this stuff just to make sure you know, everything wants to be a deliberate decision. And to be honest, as long as you learn from making the mistakes, then they're a good thing, right? It's just part of learning photography, which we're all doing. I'd love to hear any other compositional mistakes though, that you think are pretty standard that we all make. Let me know down in the comments because that's always really interesting. That's five, but there's loads of them out there, right? And we we all do them all the time, right? It's, it's never an exact science. You never get You never get perfect every time you just wanna be trying to get better, right? That's the, that's the key message, I reckon. Now you can check out all of the stuff we used for all these different photos and this video and all this sort of stuff by checking the links down in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe because there's new content all the time. And the like, let me tell you, the like really helps me out. So I appreciate every single one of you clicking that like button. I'll see you in the next video, but until next time, as always, thanks for watching.